What's up guys, this is Regulus Blues and this week we're going to be looking at Sunhouse's Special Rider Blues from 1942. Special Rider Blues by Sunhouse was recorded on the 17th of July 1942 and it's another track that was recorded by the ethnomusicologist Alan Lomax. You may remember me talking about him from the Muddy Waters video. Now, whereas Country Blues was recorded in August of 41, this song with Sunhouse was recorded the following July and it was in Robinsonville, Mississippi, which I believe is where he was living at the time. Not to be confused, by the way, Special Rider Blues with another song of the same name by Skip James. Um, though interestingly enough, Skip James's version, I think 1931, is the second last verse. Anybody who's familiar with Sun House, that should jump right at, right out at you as his most popular song, Death Letter Blues, which sounds just like that, which is a sort of reworking of his much older My Black Mama from, and I think that's from 1930. So I'll I'll come back to that. As well as talking a bit about the uh, the song, I'm going to tell you a bit about Sunhouse as well, because like Charlie Patton, he was a true legend, and he knew Charlie Patton, um, not from way, way back, but he knew him as a, as a fellow performer. Eddie James Sunhouse Jr., or just Sunhouse, was born around the beginning of the 20th century. Um, as is the case for a lot of people born around then, they're unsure exactly which year it was. Some people say it was older, but the accepted date generally is 1902. Wikipedia says he was born in the hamlet of Leon, just north of Clarksdale, Mississippi, but the notes in this CD say a difference. So this says that Sunhouse was born in Riverton, near Clarksdale, Mississippi, on the 21st of March, 1902. They were a Baptist family, and his father was a preacher. Son himself was a preacher, and he says he was very church-like, very church-oriented as a young man. So despite the fact that his father was a tuba player and guitarist, and there was actually a family band throughout his teen years and up until a story that I'll relate to in a moment, he didn't just not like blues, he hated blues. And he said that as a religious man, he did not like blues music. But he flipped to the opposite side, to the devil's music, blues music. Um, at the age of 25 in 1927. So if Special Rider Blues by Skip James is from 1931, then it could certainly be said that he took some of his lyrics from the song played by Sunhouse, My Black Mama, because that is really the sort of uh, prototype for Death Letter Blues. And it's almost word for word that second last verse with the opening verse of My Black Mama. Um, and I didn't realise till earlier, but Sunhouse did not write My Black Mama Preaching Blues, uh, and I thought he did. Apparently they were um, by James McCoy, who was another blues guitarist who he hung around with, and who had actually introduced him to blues music. So, I don't know how he got to hanging around with them, given that he hated blues music and presumably blues musicians so much. In a hamlet south of Clarksdale, he heard one of his drinking companions, so that's how he knew him, uh, either James McCoy or Willie Wilson playing bottleneck guitar. So two songs he learned from McCoy, um, whether McCoy wrote them or not, I don't know, would later be among his best known, My Black Mama and Preaching the Blues. So in an astonishingly short time, the house developed to a professional standard, a blues style based on his religious singing and simple bottleneck guitar style. Although I've, I have heard before, I think it was in an actual interview with Sun House, that he didn't um, he didn't use a bottleneck generally because he'd cut the shit out of his fingers on it. Like the 1930s bottles probably less, not as high quality as we've got these days, which is probably designed to you know not break into shards to avoid bar fights. It, you know, it's still bottleneck style because it's slide guitar, but. 
he would use a metal slide rather than a glass slide. Not long after he became a musician, while he was playing at a juke joint, um, which is basically a pub, a guy came in on a shooting spree and he shot Sun in the leg or the foot and Sun shot him back in self-defense and the guy died. Result of which is Sunhouse ends up being sentenced to 15 years at Parchman Farm, uh, which is the local state penitentiary. He served two years of this and then when he came out, he was exiled from Clarksdale and he moved to Lula, Mississippi, which is just a bit north of Clarksdale again. And it was at this point that he met Charlie Patton, who also was in exile, not from Clarksdale, but from Dockery Plantation. Some of Patton's biographers dispute this. They say that Sunhouse wasn't a good enough player for Patton to play with. A lot of the stories the biographers got were conflicted, so it's hard to tell the smaller details in a lot of these stories. But it's definitely the case that they knew each other on a professional level and it can be assumed that they were friends as well. So the Peabine Blues song from last week. So the reason Charlie was recording in Richmond is because Paramount Records' main studio was still being built and that's in Grafton, Wisconsin. So for the second session with Paramount, he didn't go back to Indiana, he went to Grafton. And this is where Sun House had his first recording session because Charlie Patton had said, do you want to come with me, Willie Brown and Louise Johnson? We're going up to record with Paramount. Unfortunately, despite recording several sides in this 1930 session in Grafton, none of these were successful, probably as a result of the depression. So sadly, whilst he did continue to play guitar, he went to work as a, as a farmhand riding a tractor which is such a shame and it's not until 1941 when Alan Lomax comes to the Mississippi that he's sort of rediscovered so he recorded in 1941 with Alan Lomax as did Muddy Waters and he recorded Special Rider Blues in 1942 in Robinsonville and then the following year he moved to New York where he sort of fell into obscurity until the mid-60s when a group led by one of the guitarists from Canned Heat, Alan Blind Al Wilson, tracked him down and they'd been looking for him all over the Mississippi and all that time he was up in New York, Rochester, New York. And it turned out he could still sing fantastically but he'd forgotten a lot of the guitar techniques so he was actually retaught to play in his own style by Alan Wilson in uh, 1964-65 and the uh, the end result of that was that he released a full album on Columbia in 65. Father of the Delta Blues, the complete 1965 sessions and that brought him back into the public, in fact to be honest it brought him into the public eye properly for the first time because the, the audience for blues musicians in the mid 60s in America just expanded with uh, due to the fact that blues rock had come along. He retired again another 10 years later, 1974, and then moved to Detroit, Michigan, and lived his retirement out there for another 14 years, and died aged 86 on the 19th of October, 1988. So that is the story of Sunhouse, the legend that is, or was, and I guess now, I should probably play you the song. It's been three quarters of an hour and I've just been rambling. Okay, so this is Sunhouse, Special Rider Blues, 1942. 